people that exercising after a heart attack would be a pretty risky business. But a report in today's Journal of the American Medical Association says that is not necessarily true. Our Dr. Bob Arnott has been taking a look at the new study. Bob, good morning. Good morning, Faith. A healthy jogger may be at greater risk of a heart attack than a former heart attack patient who's running under proper supervision. That's the comparison that the authors of this study use. Here's what they looked at. They studied the results of 51,000 patients who exercise in supervised rehabilitation programs after their heart attacks, about two and a half million hours worth of exercise. They found a very low rate of heart attack or cardiac arrest. As for the risk of death, for the former patient, it was one death per 783,000 hours of exercise. That's about 90 years. This compares with one death per 396,000 exercise for a healthy jogger. You have to jog continuously for about 45 years to suffer that risk. What's responsible for such a low rate of complications? You know, it really starts out with proper selection. Doctors are very precise about the type and amount of exercise. They do this through the use of stress tests. They look at EKGs and heart scans to make sure that they really selected the patients that are going to do best and without any excess risk to them. So the risk of heart attack is reduced, but why take the risk? Well, it really does get you back on your feet after a heart attack and back to work. It also improves the function of the heart. In other words, the heart can pump out more blood with less work. And exercise does improve the quality of life. As to whether or not life expectancy can be increased, that really isn't known. Some heart specialists think that it can add years to your life, but those studies aren't really complete yet. How, how can you make sure, though, that your exercise program is, is safe? Well, you want to be a good consumer when you go looking for an exercise program. So when you select a program, make sure it has the proper medical equipment. This includes a crash cart, a defibrillator, as well as the trained doctors, nurses, or paramedics who can revive you if the worst should happen. Now, a crash cart has all the drugs, IVs, and breathing equipment necessary to revive a patient. Second, make sure that a trained cardiologist has reviewed your heart scans, EKG, and other tests, and has put you through a stress test so you can prescribe the exact amount of uh, exercise for you. And third, make sure you ask about the success rate of the program. After all, proper patient selection and supervision by highly trained uh, experts has made this a really safe program. And by making certain that they have not lost patients or had heart attacks, you know that they've got a good, safe program. So do it under supervision rather than doing it on your own. Should everyone exercise under supervision like that? Well, you know, the risk is so low, it doesn't make sense for everybody to have to exercise under supervision. But if you're over 35 and you have some risk of heart disease, it makes good sense to have a defibrillator around and to have that crash cart in an exercise facility, any exercise facility. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Bob Barnett. We appreciate it. Dad, were you paying attention? <laughs> Still ahead this morning, some words of caution about the use of fetal monitors during childbirth. A new study says they may not be useful as doctors might hope. We'll also find out why the government is lashing out at a mascara maker and the very latest on new airline fare wars. That and more when we come back.